Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. In today's lesson, we'll be showing you how to get started with your Raspberry Pi. So I hope if you got up to this point, you went and watched the first lesson where we gave you a high level intro to what the Raspberry Pi was and why it's so amazing. Now we'll be getting more hands on. We'll be talking about how to install the operating system on our Raspberry Pi. I'll be using a 4B model today. And we'll also be talking about how to enable remote access on this device so we can actually control the Raspberry Pi without a monitor, which is pretty cool. So enough being said, I do not want to waste any time. Let's jump into it and show you the hardware we'll be using to get started with the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so let's talk about the hardware we'll be using to interact with the Raspberry Pi or to use Raspberry Pi in general. First of all, we'll have a Raspberry Pi as you see here. So I'm using the 4B model as we mentioned in part one. Now you can ignore these blue things. These are just heat sinks that I added on my Raspberry Pi because I was doing something more advanced. And these heat sinks just cool down the Raspberry Pi if it's running for a long time. The base model should not come with these heat sinks, but this is just the 4B model. So we'll be using that. And to actually install our operating system, we will need this SD card, as you see here. So I'm using 32 gigabytes. I recommend at least 32 gigabytes or, or 16. Do not get an eight gigabit one. It is cheaper, but you will be limited later on when you're working with just eight gigabits on this device, especially if you're using it for a long time. So in order to actually install the operating system on this SD card, we will need, first of all, to plug it into our personal computers and you will have to get a SD card to USB or other type of connector that connects to your computer. Maybe that's USB-C. And then you go ahead and plug this in, as you see here. And then we plug the other end into our computer. And that's how we install the latest operating system from their website. And then eventually we take this out and put it into the Raspberry Pi. So we'll talk about that in a second. So make sure you have some interface of SD card to your computer. We also need a mouse. So this is just a mouse. So we'll be scrolling on the Raspberry Pi as we do a regular computer, because as we know, the Raspberry Pi can be used as a regular computer. So you can connect a mouse and scroll around. So I just have this regular wired mouse. I recommend wired mouses and wired keyboards because I tried using wireless stuff and I always had an issue with the Raspberry Pi. So I have this keyboard here, so make sure you have a keyboard of some sort. Now it does look wireless, but I'm going to attach a wire on the top there and going to connect it to my Raspberry Pi. Make sure you have a keyboard as well. And last but not least, just two more things here. So we need a power supply. So this is just a standard uh, power supply for the Raspberry Pi. So it just goes to the outlet, other end goes to your Raspberry Pi. And then we need a, a connection to a monitor. So of course, make sure you have a monitor, but also make sure you have a HDMI to micro HDMI this one goes on the Raspberry Pi. This is what shows what's going on the screen on the Raspberry Pi operating system as you would scroll a regular computer. And this other end just goes into the monitor. So that's everything we need in terms of hardware setup. Now let's go actually download the, the operating system. Okay, so now that we understand the hardware we'll be using, let's go ahead and install the Raspberry Pi operating system on the micro SD card. So at this point, make sure you have that micro SD card inserted into your computer. Once again, I mentioned that I had a micro SD card to USB converter to connect to my Mac. I'm using a Mac today. And we can just go to raspberrypi.com software and we could just download the imager. So the imager is just some software they have to actually install the operating system on that SD card. So that's all it does. So you can go ahead and download it for Mac. If you're on a Mac, if you're on a Windows, and they also have for Linux as well. And we can go ahead and open this. And once we open it, we see that it tells us to drop it into the applications. I already have it installed. We could just uh, replace it, that's fine. So give it a moment to replace. So that should be quick there. It's a pretty small application actually. And then once we're there, we can actually open the, the imager. So let's scroll down here, Raspberry Pi imager. And I'll just show you how seamless it is to use this software and install the operating system. Very beginner friendly. So we could just choose the device. So ours is a Raspberry Pi 4 operating system. Just pick the, the one they recommend. So that is Raspberry Pi OS 64 bits, Debian bookworm at the time of this, this, the creation of this tutorial. And then we could just choose the storage. So this is my micro SD card, the, the storage device, the 30, almost 32 gigabytes. We can go ahead and click that. And then we could just do next. And would you like to apply OS customization settings? No, we don't care about that. And then all existing data on generic storage device media will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. So it's asking me for my password for my Mac and then it's just going to write it. So once this is done, we'll jump back to it and then we will plug that SD card into a Raspberry Pi and start interacting with the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so it looks like it was installed successfully. Now that's done, we could take the SD card out of a computer and put it into our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now that we have our Raspberry Pi OS installed in SD, we can just go back to our Raspberry Pi. Now we can attach our 
our components to interact with it, first of all, I went ahead and attached my, my mouse and keyboard here. So just simple USB attachments with my mouse and keyboard. And right here on the bottom left, I have the power supply. Other end will be plugged into the power. And then this is the micro HDMI to HDMI. So this, the other end of this HDMI will be plugged into my monitor. And finally, if I flip it on the back here, what you'll see is I have my SD card inserted there. So you could just insert it in this orientation. As you see, just go ahead and push it in there. And once that's, once that's said and done, make sure it's powered on. Other end is on your monitor. And let's see how it looks on the monitor now that the Raspberry Pi OS is installed and it's plugged in. Okay, so it looks like our Raspberry Pi finally booted on after we inserted our micro SD card, connected it to our monitor. And you see now I'm interacting with it after I powered it on. So now we're just setting it up real quick. So you go ahead and put whatever setup you'd like here. We'll just put a username and a password. So we'll just call it Shilla. And then password, we'll just do one, two, three, four, five for now. And we'll just do one, two, three, four, five. Obviously you want a more secure password than that, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And then it's asking us to connect to a wireless network. So I'll go ahead and find my intranets here. So does this one. So make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi network as your computer because that will enable SSH later on. So we have to be on the same network to SSH properly into our computer. So I selected the same internet network as my computer is connected to, and I'm just going to connect. So very seamless setup here, very smooth. And then next. So give that a moment to connect and we will just choose the default browser as Chromium. If you like Firefox, you can choose that as well. Okay, then next. So it's checking for updates now. If, if there are some updates for some reason, we did install the latest OS, so there shouldn't be. Maybe there is. Just let it go ahead and install those updates. Okay, so it looks like after a bit of time, those updates were installed. Not sure exactly what they were, but I just went ahead and let them install. We can go ahead and click OK. And then it's asking us to restart our Raspberry Pi so we can go ahead and do that. And once it's restarted, we'll jump into the essentially the desktop of the Raspberry Pi OS and show you how that looks. Okay, so after my Raspberry Pi restarted, looks like it automatically signed me in. So this is how it looks. First time interacting with Raspberry Pi OS. You can see it looks exactly like any desktop pretty much that you would interact with on a Mac or a Windows where you have a mouse and you can go around clicking things. So this is how my monitor looks right now. You see there's a browser there so you can even search the internet. I am connected to the internet on my Raspberry Pi, so make sure you are connected. And there's a bunch of other things, you know, there's sound and video settings you can play with and that sorts of thing. So I'll leave that up to you to play with all these apps if you like. Next thing I want to do is once we are in this ecosystem now, now that we signed in, we can go ahead and enable SSH. So SSH is a protocol that enables us to interact with our Raspberry Pi remotely without the need for this monitor. So sometimes if your monitor is occupied, you may want to use this SSH methodology to connect to your Raspberry Pi. And then you can do pretty much the same thing via SSH as you would with this mouse and keyboard. So to enable SSH, first of all, we want to go to a terminal, which is a command line interface to interacting with our Raspberry Pi. So that means we're interacting with essentially words and commands rather than just our mouse and keyboard as you would on a traditional computer. So in this terminal, what we're going to do is we can just go ahead and type sudo raspi config. And once we are in here, we can go ahead and scroll down. So we could just go down on our keyboard, go to interface options, go to SSH. And then it says, would you like to enable SSH server? Yes, we would like to. So this will configure the Raspberry Pi to allow us to connect remotely without a monitor. So we can go ahead and click yes. So SSH server is enabled. So that is great. And then we can go ahead and click escape on the keyboard. So SSH is now enabled on our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now that we have SSH enabled, the only thing left we need from our Raspberry Pi to use it is to get the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. So we could just go into a terminal again, type in this new command if config. And there are so many commands. If you want to pretty much do anything on your Raspberry Pi, there's a high chance there is a command that you can execute in the terminal like this. So if config, just type that in. And 
in the if config command, what we want to do is we just want to see this WLAN section and we want to go to this INETS and then we want to save this somewhere. So this is the IP address of our Raspberry Pi on our local network. And we'll be using this on our local computer to connect to our Raspberry Pi without the monitor. So I'll show you that next. Okay, so now that we have SSH enabled, we can just go ahead and go back to our computer and we don't even have to have our Raspberry Pi connected to a monitor at this point, as long as SSH is enabled and the Raspberry Pi is on and connected to the same network that is the same internet network as our local computer, we should be able to SSH into the Raspberry Pi and interact with it via a, a, a command line. So I'm on my Mac here. I'm going to go ahead and open the terminal app. Now, if you've never used this app, this is just a a CMD style app on Windows. So on, on Windows, we have CMD where you can type in system level commands via text and it does some operations. So what we're going to do in this terminal app on my Mac, if you're on a Windows, once again, that's CMD or PowerShell, I believe. We could just go ahead and type in SSH and we could type in your username on the Raspberry Pi at the IP address. So that is 198. Point, actually, it's 198.168.4.32. So we can go ahead and click enter and we can go ahead and type in yes and then it's asking us for the password this is the password on your raspberry pi so that is one two three four five and you see now we are in this ssh shell so now we should be able to interact with the raspberry pi as if we did with the terminal on the raspberry pi itself so you can type in ls to see the files and that sort of thing on the raspberry pi and you can go into certain directories so we can go into the documents see what's there and this is just a great way of accessing your Raspberry Pi remotely if you do not have access to a monitor, and I use this a lot. The only drawback is if you're used to using a GUI that is a mouse and keyboard, maybe it's not the best way, but trust me, you could pretty much do a majority of the things you do with mouse and keyboard with these with these CMD style commands. So we're not gonna go over all the commands, but I just want to show you that SSH is incredibly powerful and easy to set up as we just did right here. So that sums it up for today's tutorial. As you saw, really easy to install the Raspberry Pi operating system and get it loaded onto Raspberry Pi and interact with the Raspberry Pi. We also learned how to enable remote access and use that as well. While we won't be using that today per se, I, I would imagine you want to keep that in your back pocket for future application of the Raspberry Pi if you continue to use this for IoT and electronics applications because because speaking from personal experience, I use remote access pretty much every time I want to interact with the Raspberry Pi. I find it really useful. And a lot of the times I'm using my monitor for other things. So it's really good. We learn that as well. So that being said, we're going to talk about our next lesson after this. And that is we're going to interact with our first piece of hardware with the Raspberry Pi. So we're learning how to blink an LED. So we'll write our first Python code on the Raspberry Pi as well. So really exciting, especially if you've never written code before and if it's your first time interacting with hardware. So maybe in the next lesson where we write our first program and that is blinking an LED with a Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching and I will see you later.